All right, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Hollywood Hi. Interviews. We are live right here in Hollywood Affiliate Marketing Services. As you can see below, it says subscribe to Hollywood Interviews. But for tonight, we are going to be interviewing Kay Lee here. And as you see now on the ticker, we got follow Prim up on Instagram. She is the top hairstylist in all of DFW. She will make trips, though, if you need her to. So why don't we give her a chance to introduce herself? Uh, go ahead, Krishana. Or would you prefer me to call you Kate? You can call me whatever comes out first. All right. So my name is Krishana Lee. I also go by Kay Lee. I'm a hairstylist here in Dallas. But like Nick said, I will travel. Um, I specialize in extensions, but I do all sorts of styles. Um, I've been a hairstylist for about 10 years. And I have a salon located near the Dallas Galleria. And I hope everybody joins and you all ask me as many questions as you would like. That sounds very, very good. All right. So um, now that we got the introduction out of the way, I guess the first question that I would probably ask you is um, how long have you been doing here? I'm sure everybody wants to know that. I've been a hairstylist for about 10 years. So I did cosmetology in high school and that was, I graduated in 06. Then I went to Sam Houston State. I got my degree in business in 2010, but I did cosmetology in high school. So I was already a hairstylist, but I was not working full time as a hairstylist until after college. So since 2010, I have been a hairstylist. Well, I guess I, it's a good time to admit that you know, I, I met you at Sam Houston. And no, you didn't do my hair at that point. But there was a point where I did live and move to Dallas. And I actually got my hair done by Krishana or Kaylee. You know, I went to Prim Up. Y'all can't see it right now. My hair was a lot longer. And I had a nice little hairstyle I got done um, when I went to my cousin's wedding at, in Atlanta. So thank you for that. I believe she's also done my sister's hair. And it just so happened, you know, such a small world that when I finally found, you know, a barber out in Dallas, that she ended up being uh, cutting. I mean, not cutting, but she ended up doing hair in the same salon. That, that was pretty crazy. I, I'm next door. So I have a salon suite and it's next door to his barbershop. So I saw Nick walking past one day and I was thinking, I was like, wow, I think I, I know him. But he didn't see me inside of my suite. So when I went to the restroom, I took a peek in and I opened the door and I was like, hey, Nick. So he was no longer coming to me because he was cutting his hair again. And of course, he has a haircut. Well, now. well, actually, I was getting it. I remember one day I spent a lot of money. I, I went to <laughs> get my hair cut and then I came to you right after that or something like that. And then you did it. So I was not only was I in the salon for a long time, but I had to drop some bread that day. Yeah, I mean, well, when you have to go to two professionals, the hairstylist to get your braids, and then a barber to get your cut, I mean... When you go into the you top gotta people, you got to pay top good, dollar. Right? That's true, that's true. But <laughs> I, well, well, I will, um, I guess something else that's kind of um, interesting is, uh, I, I mean, I'll say this, there, there's, a, there's a whole experience, but just to let the people know, which we'll talk about this later, about where you're located, it's pretty crazy, but uh, she's so she's in a salon near the gallery, and it's a higher end area. I know they're paying a whole lot of money, so make sure you guys do that. So hold up, hold up, somebody got you. Okay, Bun, I see you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and then you got some. Hey, so you got some fans out there in the crowd watching. I can't see their names. I wish I could. No, if you if you are trying to have your name done, just allow um, Facebook to. To or StreamYard to um, get access to your Facebook. All right. So I guess, you know, next question. So why did you start doing hair? Well, I was always around hair. Um, my grandmother was a hairstylist. She owned a salon. My mom was a hairstylist. She worked in my grandmother's salon. And it was my dad's mom who was a hairstylist and owned the salon. And my mom worked in her salon. And so I would spend weekends up there. I was just always at the salon and I was always around here. So it just came quite naturally. And what I specialize in versus what they were doing back then is totally different, but it always was an interest of mine. I also grew up around 
so many women. There are like way more women than men in my family. So, and all the women are like very girly, like with their hair, their makeup and getting dressed up. So I was just always around it. And just quite naturally, I just gravitated to it. Yeah, kind of like you couldn't so, get away from it. So it's a long time coming. So I can't really say, you know what I'm saying? It was just like natural. Like I just, my whole life. Well, I, I, real quick, it was so, um, I actually, Brittany Griffin and Keon, Kiana Gaines who were um, shouting okay. you out. Both of, both of my clients. Oh hey, if you're if you're her client, make sure you drop some uh some some feedback in the comments below. Please do. And ask any questions that you may have, even though yes. I answer all the questions when they come to get their hair done, just you know, just in case. Oh, trust me, I got my hair done by you and I got questions. So <laughs> with with that, I know you said that you've been around it forever in your family and everybody and you really couldn't get away with it, but I mean even, you know, being around your parents who drive your whole life or something like that, what actually said, you know, let me, let me go put my hands in some hair and try. Mm, me wanting to wear my hair a certain way and my mom not wanting to do my hair that way or telling me that I can't wear my hair that way. And I'm just going to go ahead and just, you know, do my own hair. So then I would switch my hair up at school. And then the girls at school would be like, you know, can you do my hair? Can you put a braid in my hair? So I was like on the playground, like braiding girls' hair, or like putting their ponytail in a different way. And, you know, they may buy me some chips or or something. Or <laughs> Buy you some chips? Bitch. So wait, you said on the playground. So you were in elementary school when you started doing this? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how it started. But I didn't officially get money for hair until I was in junior high. But you were still charging for your services through, you know, yeah, like you had bags to get, of um, chips or, you know, maybe somebody, I don't know. Right. Or like you have to do my homework. It was like something. So, you know, that that just. <laughs> okay. That was the thing. So you had a business mind from a long time ago, very early age. Okay. Yes. I'm yes. pretty sure you, you text me for almost anything that I've ever gotten to. So <laughs> 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 not to say that she's too ridiculous, anybody, but. Um, you know, you gotta pay. You pay for what you want, you know, and right. you get what you pay for. I charged you. I didn't tax you. It's two different things. It's two different things. Okay. Depending on which time we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it may have felt like but, I was taxing you because you weren't used to coming to the hair salon to get those braids. So when you go to the barber shop, you know it's real quick, in and out, little cut, and they charge a certain amount. When you come to the salon. You're in there longer. The services cost more. So it's really a different experience. So I can see how guys can think like, oh, wow, it's so expensive, you know, to get your hair done. And guys always say that women pay so much to get their hair done. But the styles that we do, the techniques we have, and I mean, I'm not, no, I'm not knocking any barbers. I know that you all work hard too. But when you think about all the things that we do, we have to charge more. And our styles last longer. I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know about the barbershop if your style lasting longer. Well, at the barbershop, as soon as your hair grows, you have to be back, right? Well, I, I, all right, all right. For for maybe for a female, then that may be the case. Because you guys can wear it for, for quite some time. But I guess me, or as a male, your hair will probably come out a little bit faster. But... We will get into maintenance. Yeah, so we will get into maintenance in a second. Okay. But, um, you know, that's something that I would have to say. Like, so, you know, for instance, you got an NBA player. His hair, I would assume, is not going to last as long as somebody who has a more sedentary lifestyle. <laughs> but you got the maintenance tips. So we're going to let you talk about that in a second. Okay. But I just wanted to ask, I guess, if you have um, any clients still left from elementary school or junior high. Definitely from junior high. Um, I may, you know what I do? I do. I do have clients from elementary, actually. <laughs> Hi. I can't see who that is. It says Facebook user. That would be Kametria Lau. Lau, okay. Hi, Mimi. You guys, don't forget to uh, leave leave some some comments about how she does her hair if you are her uh, one of her clients. 
It's the bun for me. <laughs> yeah, it's the bun for me. I was actually wanting to do something to my hair before the podcast. I, look, I was actually wanting to do something to my hair before the uh, the podcast, but clearly I ran out of time, so it's the bun today. Hold on, let, let's give them a close up real quick. <laughs> show 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 them off the hairstyle real quick. Show them the bun. There you go. Okay. And I had a baby hair, so you know what I'm saying? I and see I it. I to do something. I think I even had some, some edges <laughs> laid, and I didn't even know I had an itch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, Nick, you uh, actually have a really soft texture of hair. So, oh, well, thank you. Know, you. Let me, let me go ahead and show them a little bit, you know, a little bit of light. Y'all need any light? Just, you got it? You see it? You know? Yeah. Just I a little bit of drip. Like a few ways a few yeah no, i might i might drown somebody <laughs> are they swimming i don't know if they drown but they swimming okay oh raquel <laughs> laquel oh. yes yes my fault hello um so you do still have clients from all the way from from elementary school yes i do that's pretty, I mean, that speaks volumes in itself, to be honest with you. But I guess, so with that then, I'm sure they've had to see somebody in the in the past. So, um, or throughout this this period of time, I guess, what what, do you, what would you say makes you different? Matter of fact, before you answer that, we had a question. Uh, where do you see your career in five years? In five years? Well, in five years, my goal is to no longer be behind the chair. I want to own my salon. I want to focus on my retail. Um, I just did a podcast last week where I spoke a little bit about um, my vending machines that are coming soon. And I'm going to sell beauty products in those. My hair extensions will be available there. Wigs, um, lashes, and some hair products. So definitely focusing on my retail and no longer behind the chair because honestly, my feet hurt sometimes, my hands hurt, and I love to do hair. I love being a hairstylist, but it's a lot of wear and tear on your body over, over the years. So I just want to either get from behind the chair completely or just service my loyal clients that have been coming to me all this time, which there are many, so that would still keep me busy, but just service those people and, um, Focus on my retail and, and travel a little bit and, and start a family. All that good stuff. You might have to go back to the old days where, you know, they had to sit between your lap on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and you sit in the chair. Yeah, I mean, you know. That, that, it worked back then. <laughs> I actually saw a a chair on Facebook. It was here on, a, on Facebook. And it was somewhere in Asia. This guy made this uh, salon chair and it was like this huge contraption. So the client sits in a chair and then he had like a mobile chair connected to the chair and he could like go all the way around like 360 and sit down the entire time he was like cutting and styling the hair. So that, you know, that that's an option, I guess. Well, I mean, that... <laughs> I don't know how well it works, but I mean, it exists, so. In in Asia, they got a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of a lot of things that you know they can make happen that we might necessarily not be able to. Right. See, I'm the hairstylist that I stand up on my feet because I feel like I work better when I'm standing up. But um, you know, they have like little stools and stuff for hairstylists to use so that you don't have to stand on your feet. But I try not to be the hairstylist. So I used to consider those people like lazy, but the older I get, I'm realizing that they're not lazy. They're just tired of standing up on their feet. So I, I might be one of those people in, you know, a couple of years from now. Understood. <laughs> well, um, if you ever end up getting that, or maybe you can invent something. I mean, you come up with the idea, you never know. That's that might take I you did. somewhere. That's a good idea. I should invent something. Maybe maybe that's next. Maybe we can look forward to that in the next five years. Okay. Okay. I guess with your services, I guess this could be a part a two part question. So with your services, do you currently offer like um, hair care or coaching for somebody who's trying to take care of a hairstyle or maybe grow their hair into a specific 
um, hairstyle. Maybe somebody has damaged hair, and then you can go that way. Second part of that would depend on which one you want to answer first. Would be when you're talking about opening up this salon. Do you think that you know? Obviously, there's going to be a certain. I would assume that there's going to be a criteria for the um, the other stylists that you hire. And I guess, would you be a mentor or provide guidance guidance for them, or do you expect them to already be there? Okay, so it's kind of loaded. Let me answer I the last part first because it's fresh on my mind. So I would definitely guide and help them because when I started out as a hairstylist, I of course I started out so young, so it was a lot that I knew. But the salon culture is different than when you're young and and working from home or working with friends. So the coaching that I think that most young stylists or starting stylists would need is the business aspect of it, not necessarily how to coach them on certain hairstyles because you learn that in cosmetology. And um, and then you can zoom in on whatever you think that you flourish at or whatever you're best at. So I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to teach them that, but as far as marketing yourself and and conducting business in a professional environment building your clientele i would definitely want to help everyone in my salon with that i would want everybody okay. to be successful and and make their money and of course if they're in a the salon depending on how they pay rent either they pay booth rent or or a, a space to rent a suite or they would pay me per client i would get a percentage of the income so it's only to my benefit as well to help them in business. So yes, very much so. I definitely want to be active in that. Now, okay. the other question was about hair care. So yes, yeah, so actually, um, I was gonna say this will probably be probably be the start of you know just getting a little bit more into the science of things. So if you if you don't mind spending a little bit of time on it and um, you know kind of just expound a little bit. So I'm going to start off with, um, you know, do you provide coaching for your clients as far as the damage that we were talking about and the maintenance and stuff like that? And then I'll probably lead into, um, you know, another question. Yes, I do offer coaching. Coaching. So what it is, that is a consultation. So if you book a consultation and you have questions, I answer those. We come up with a game plan for whatever ideas you have for your hair, whether it's hair growth or it's just a certain style working with your hair, a certain way that you want to wear your hair. Some women just want their curls to come back. So if it's a matter of how to get your hair one texture, or how to care for it, all of that is under coaching. But what it is, is they would book a consultation and I would help them with that. Now, if you book a service, then the consultation comes with the service. So every time you come, I do coach you and give you information on how to keep up with your hair. Um, I give them an analysis of what I think about their hair. If I think a certain style is good for them, that it may be uh, damaging, damaging to their hair or pulling some of their edges out or whatever the case may be, then of course I'm gonna let them know. I'm gonna share that with them and say, look, I, I don't think that this is the right style for you. Or if I've done that style and I realized that it was not good on their hair or I noticed a difference, I'm going to let them know that that style was not the style that we should have done. We need to do something that has less tension on their hair and vice versa. Like I just, if, if they want a style and they want it to last, but their hair texture won't really last as long in this style. So say you come in and you're like, okay, I just want something real simple, but I want it to last for a month. And you have like 4C hair or or something a little more textured than 4C, then two feet in braids. That's a very simple style that anybody can wear. You can do it on any hair texture, but the coarser or the more textured your hair is, the less time that style will last on you. And also the finer your hair is, your hair is less likely to last. But that style could last somebody for one month if their hair isn't extremely fine and thin or isn't extremely thick and coarse. So everything varies depending on the person, but every time they come to me, 
a consultation and me giving you a game plan for your hair is included. Okay. So since since it sounds like you you got the science down, you're an expert. So. Um, like I mentioned earlier, like say for instance, you are I don't know, Kawhi Leonard just got braids or whatever the case is. And you know, braids are pretty hot right now. Would you agree? Yeah. So and you got some yes, amazing braid oh styles I that I have so seen. So many too. clients that have booked for braids. Yeah. I yeah. you got a ton of clients. I mean, you say you got a ton of clients, but I mean I mean, I've seen some of the some of the work, it just makes you kind of want to grow your hair just to get them. So I guess, you know, like I said, the summertime is oh, coming up. Usually in the wintertime, everybody's kind of stagnant. You're locked in the house. You're not doing too much movement. Um, and, you know, from what I've seen, you know, when you're playing basketball, you're whatever the case is, people braid their hair, but they can get messed up. And for the styles that you're doing and, yeah. you know, even even myself have come in, having come to you before, um, you know, I guess what would you suggest to a client to actually maintain the braids, especially with the summer coming up. Okay. And it's rule, hot. And you know everybody's gonna be all oh, human and I gotta I know. Well, rule number one for every style that you have, tie your hair up at night. I don't care if you just have your hair all over the place, curly, whatever, and you're planning on getting it done the next day, you washed it and you didn't blow it out or whatever. Always wrap your hair up in satin every single night. Okay, so in satin. In satin. Satin keeps, it, it protects your hair from breaking, and it also keeps the moisture in your hair, and it keeps your hair from being frizzy. So it helps with the braids because, you know, when you sweat and you go out there and, I mean, even if you're sweating from just working out or whatever, or just from going outside in Texas because it's so hot, okay? And mm -hmm. you sweat, and then you put that satin on your hair overnight, and those little frizzy pieces, they, they go down and it keeps that moisture in there. So that's number one to protecting any hairstyle you have, but also protecting your hair. Now you can get a satin pillowcase. That always helps because a cotton pillowcase would break your hair, but a satin do pillowcase you, would help. Do you suggest sleeping a certain way? Like maybe not laying on the hair or does it really matter? That doesn't really matter. It's it's inevitable. I mean, it's just hard. You can't not mm -hmm. sleep on your. Because I've known of people to be like, "Oh, I gotta sleep like this," and you know, well, you know, crouch up in a certain way just so that they don't mess their hair up. Well, that's good to do like temporarily, like if you're taking a nap or if you just really want your hair to be like in tip top shape and exactly how it is that night. You want it to be like that the next morning. That's one thing you can do, but I wouldn't recommend anybody sleep a certain way that they shouldn't be sleeping. I don't want you to have neck or back problems or any of that just because you're trying to protect your hairstyle. You gotta have a neck brace so you can keep it your, your head you know up because all night you didn't sleep no way. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, just like sleep, sleep straight up in a chair, just like this, with a neck brace on. If I wanted you to keep your hair a certain way and you have to sleep a certain way, that's how I would recommend you sleep. But, Man, I know even some dudes who won't sleep on their back just because they think that it's going to mess the waves up. And I'm just kind of like, <laughs> I personally think, like, if you got them, you got them. But I mean, hey. I mean, you sleeping, any part of your hair that's touching something, especially when it's pressed up against something, has the potential to to mess up or change or whatever. But it's if you put a satin scarf on your head or a do-rag for guys, if you do that, then that protects the hair and you may have to brush it or or run your fingers through it but that's gonna hold that style for you whether your hair is straight whether it's short or long you have curls braids you're wearing your hair loose and down whatever the case is you or up you wrap your hair up with with satin every single night that's number one okay. to maintaining and protecting a hairstyle Okay, and I guess before we get to this next question, could you expand on expound on um the I guess what's post number one to main maintenance? What's post number one? Okay. Yeah, we've already established it doesn't matter how you sleep, doesn't matter if you're doing so, that, and you want to wear satin. So what else would you do recommend to uh, maintain you know your braids or your hair, especially with this heat coming up? I see this question below. That's what's like taking my attention. What is your favorite style to do? Um, I would say a sew-in. I really like to do sew-ins. So. 
And we will be getting to the sewing section in a okay. second. So back, so back to what we were talking about. Um, second to maintaining your I froze. Can you see me? Hi, yes. Guys. Okay. So second to protecting your braids would be to moisturize your hair. So when, of course, when you have your hair braided, especially in the summertime, your scalp is exposed. And when you're sweating, like you said, for an athlete or something like that, or somebody that's working out, that sweat has salt in it. So it dries out your hair. So hmm. if you spray your hair with oil, or you have oil with a little a dropper and you can put that along the uh, parts like where your scalp is and also inside of the braid, making sure that your hair is moisturized. That will also help you protect your style and protect your hair. So it does both. Maintaining a hairstyle and protecting your hair, they go hand in hand because what you do every night to maintain that hairstyle and protect your hair ultimately is what's gonna make your hair look better. The healthier, the healthier your hair is, the better your hair will look. So, so I mean, well, while you're while you're sweating and stuff like that, like even if you're not an athlete and you're just outside and it's 108 degrees, you know, out here. Yeah. And there, and you're sweating, you know, male or female. Yeah. Is there anything that you can do? Does there, the sweat actually damp? I mean, mess it up or? Well, it doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Well, okay, it can mess up your hair because if your hair is natural. And that moisture, I mean, not moisture, but water, which is moisture, but sweat is salty. So it's drying your hair, hair out, but it's also making your hair wet. So that wetness is going to react, it's going to uh, activate all those products that you have. And then mm -hmm. once the uh, salt penetrates that, then it's going to dry it out. And it's going to take some of that product, it's going to remove that from your, your hair. So you're just standing okay. outside and whatever is in your hair is either sweating down onto your face or your body and leaving your hair. So you will have to put something, you first off, moisture, in order to make sure your hair is moisturized and tying it down at night. Those are the two things that you would need to do, especially with sweating. I've actually seen guys with uh, braids play with a satin do-rag or go to the gym with the satin do-rag um, and things like that. So I guess that is it. So I guess, I mean, do you have any other uh, tips for maintenance as far as that's concerned or? I do. Well, one thing that you just mentioned, you said that you see guys want to go work out with a do-rag on. So mm -hmm. it's good to keep your hair tied up in that satin because when that moisture is hitting it, the product, instead of falling down onto your face, it's kind of, it's holding it in place. It's getting on the do-rag as well, but it's holding it in place where it won't trip down on your face and break you out or on your clothes or whatever, but it's keeping it there right where it should be. And it's still protecting your hair, like keeping that moisture in there. And so it's not giving your, your hair room to get frizzy and swell and, and mess up. Because once you go out there and you do whatever you're doing and your hair starts to dry up and swell, and then you go to put the do-rag on, even though it will it will help recover the style, if you had it on in the first place, it'll protect the style much better than it will after you sweat and you let your hair swell up and then you put it on. Okay. So it's a preventative thing. That's why they put it on first. Um, another thing that I've noticed with braids is using wrapping lotion or a foam. So what's in there is, it's almost like a, a liquid gel, okay? And so, okay. you know, gel, like, holds your hair in place where it won't move. So if you get little frizzy pieces or if your style is not looking as fresh and you've been putting your do-rag on and you've put some moisture on your hair, you can put that foam over all of your hair and then tie your hair down with the do-rag. You can also put the oil on it with the foam and then tie your hair down with a do-rag. You wake up the next day and I mean, it almost looks like your braids were redone. Well, I think that the you know, next time for me and for anybody else that's out there, I think that's a lot of great information. Yes. And uh, you know, hopefully any of the athletes that's out there watching that ever come across this, um, yeah, you can thank Kaylee. Matter of fact, you can go find them. We'll definitely let the uh, 
let you know how you can contact her uh, at the end. But also, don't forget, it's down at the bottom. And if anybody has used um, Krishan in the past or Prim Up, please make sure to continue to leave your feedback as we go through the interview. And I guess we can now get to, you know, some of everybody's favorite question. It is going to be about hair extensions. So, and I think this is also your favorite thing to talk about. Oh, wait, hold on. Before we get to that, infamous question. <laughs> is it okay. necessary to, 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 you know, or do you, or can you actually scratch? <laughs> or do you got to, you know? That is a good question, right? Okay, uh -huh. so depending on how your hair is done, your extensions or whatever, you might not, or even if you just have braids as a guy, you might not be able to like get under the braid or whatever. So that's where this comes into play. Uh -huh. And I mean, I prefer the head hitting because that will help protect your style more so. Or it won't mess up your hair more so than like digging in your head. Because after you do all that, it's like you're almost unraveling that braid. And I know a lot of my clients do it under their sew ins. They get combs, they get the end of a comb, a rat tail comb, and they like stick it in there and, and get uh -huh. to their scalp all good. And I understand that it feels so good. It's such a relief because it's like that itch that you can't get to. However, mm -hmm. not only does it mess up the foundation of your sew ins or mess up your braids, but it also breaks off your hair. Ooh. So don't do it. Hit it. Take the concussion instead. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Take the concussion, guys. Don't don't start digging the pants. I gotta, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm for it. I didn't know. I didn't know. Maybe that's what I need to do in five years. I need to come out with a solution and a utensil to get under those braids that won't break your hair off, but it will relieve that itch that you cannot scratch. You know how many how many lives you would save by just stopping you know, this right here? You know how rich I would be if I could come up with something like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, make sure you patent that idea. I need All right. To. Well, now, <laughs> sorry about that, Kiana. We will get to your question. What is your favorite style to do? I think you did say uh, sew-ins. That is the same as extensions, correct? It's a form of extensions, yes. Okay, okay. There's so many forms. Sew-ins is your favorite. So I guess... Um, well, what type of extensions do you do? I do sew-ins. I do micro links. I do clip-ins. I do wigs. I do various hair pieces, ponytails. Braids are a form of extension if you're adding the hair in. Anything where you add hair in is a form of extension. So I do every form of extensions. The um, one, there's two forms of extensions that I do the least. And um, that is tape-in extensions and fusion, hair fusions. You're going to have to expound a little bit on that. Um, right now, we, we're going to thank Kiana for her, her sweet feedback. It says, love her. She helped me grow my perm without having to do a big chop, and my hair is now natural, healthy, and long. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. She has be a beautiful head of hair. Thank you, Kiana. Well, all right, so yeah, you're gonna you're definitely gonna have to expound on the um on that, and I guess you okay. can even go into maintenance on well, on extensions let me as well. On that. I'm so glad she said that because when Kiana started coming to me, she wanted to grow out her hair, but she did not want to do the big chop. So what we did was we did extensions, we did sew ins for for years, and it really grew her hair out, and that's what prevented her from having to do the big chop. Because with the, the sew-ins, your hair is braided up underneath. And braids mm -hmm. are a protective style that encourage and promote hair growth. So her hair was growing underneath her extensions. So I braid the hair up. I sew the hair on. And she actually would leave a little hair out. And um, she would maintain that in-between appointments. But she would come in for maintenance. And so... She wouldn't put too much heat or anything on her hair. And so all of her hair grew, even the hair that was left out. Um, and every time she would come, I would clip her ends, whatever was damaged. Because when you're going from being relaxed to being natural, that relaxed hair is going to shed. 
it's going to break. You're going to have a lot of split ends. So that's why most people do the big chop. But if you have a hair care professional maintaining your hair for you and helping you out with that, then you won't have that issue. You don't necessarily have to do the big chop. But I understand why so many women do it. Um, well, we didn't have to do that. All of my clients don't have to do that because I'm able to coach them and help them find a style to wear in the meantime so that they can transition from their hair being one way to being another way. And that's what we did to maintain her hair. And um, I think we did sew-ins for maybe four years straight. And Can you damage those? Can you damage sew-ins? Yeah, like not necessarily from the root, but like, I don't know, could you get like potentially like split ends in them by not taking care of it? Yes, you can. Oh, well, wow. Keep it in too long. If you keep it in too long and then your hair gets tangled or matted, and then when you go to comb that hair out, you're going to lose a lot of hair and your hair is going to break wherever it was extremely matted or tangled. And so you're going to result in hair, hair loss because of that. Um, if the braids are too tight or the sew in is too tight, that can also cause you to um, lose hair. It can cause traction alopecia. So you can definitely damage your hair with the sew in. So you want to be mindful of who you're going to how informed they are on your hair texture and the styles that you're wanting. And um, you definitely want to go to a professional to maintain it as well. Like I said, I would she was truly hate to, to be diagnosed with that. Excuse me? I would truly hate to be diagnosed with that. Show up at, you with, know, show up at the barber or show, show up at the, uh, you know, the stylist. Um, I'm sorry, uh, sir, we can't work on your hair. You, you, here, let's just, here, come on. Yeah, track. What did you say? Traction alopecia? Traction alopecia. So Ooh, yeah, that's alopecia sound. due to your hair being too tight or too much tension on your hair. So it's not hereditary or anything like that. It just means that your hair is damaged from being over manipulated or being brushed. Well, over manipulation means being pulled too tight with a brush or being braided too tight or being pulled up into a ponytail too tight and you're laying on that ponytail and that hair that's against that cotton, if you're not tying your hair down with satin and you're not sleeping on a satin pillowcase, you have your hair up, you sleep on that satin pillowcase and you're moving your head at night, you wake up and over time, this will thin out. So that's another reason why it's important to sleep with satin. Oh, wow. So, so, you have to okay. keep all, so you have to keep all this stuff in mind. Hmm. But, um, That's pretty interesting. Yes. I think that a male can get that from, from I think a barber a long time ago told me, uh, guys who, you know, are constantly wearing a do-rag all the time and they tie it too tight, that they start losing hair where they tie it too tight. That, even from wearing hats. So guys that constantly wear baseball hats or whatever, if they're constantly wearing it and they, they make sure that that band or whatever is on, if it's on too tight, that part, like around here, you'll start to lose hair right there. It happens on kids. It can happen on babies, kids, anybody. Anything that's huh. on your hair and it's, it's too tight can cause traction alopecia, which is just alopecia, but it's due to something you're doing. It's not hereditary, oh. and there's no reason that you should have it other than something that you're doing. Wow. So that's definitely enlightening. So I guess for different hairstyles, I mean, for, not necessarily hairstyles, but for different, for, um, I guess different types of extensions, is there different maintenance? So you mentioned like micro links and tape and, you know, all this other stuff that I'm not familiar with, but is there different maintenance for all of that? Um, it is different maintenance for different, um, forms of extensions, but ultimately the basics of the maintenance for extensions is washing your hair every so often, making sure that your natural hair is protected underneath and um, consulting with a beauty professional to make sure that you're doing your due diligence when you're not in the salon. So mm -hmm. for sew-ins, you shouldn't wear a sew-in over eight weeks. I say eight weeks, but for sure, no longer than 10 weeks. Because after 10 weeks, you deal with tangling and matting. So your hair pretty much dreads underneath. That's no good. You're going to lose hair. With micro links, they last up to six months. But you have to come in 
once every month at the max every two months to come in and get those micro links readjusted. So that way I'm seeing the strands of your hair. I'm assessing whether or not it's too heavy on your hair. If it's breaking off while you have that on, I'm using the right shampoo and conditioner to make sure that your hair is soft and moisturized while having those micro links in because that's very important with micro links as well as with sew-ins. It's important that your scalp underneath is, is clean and moisturized at the same time. Um, with tape extensions, you have to move those more frequently. It's not a very long lasting form of extensions. And it's my least favorite form of extensions because the tape can really pull at, pull at your hair. But it's- mm. So you can get alopecia from it. Traction alopecia. Well, yes and no. So it's not necessarily traction alopecia, but you will have hair loss because that tape turns into like a, a gummy type of glue on your hair. And you mm. have to be very careful with the way you remove it. And I know hairstylists out there, they say, you know, it's a way for you to remove glue from your hair and it's not going to damage your hair. But the more you do that, you will damage your hair over time. You can't keep right. gluing hair in your head and thinking that you're not going to lose some hair. So your hair yeah. will thin out over time. So uh, tape extensions and fusions are my least favorite for that reason. Um, okay. With the fusions, they're very similar to micro links, except instead of attaching the hair with a, a micro bead, you're attaching the hair with glue or a keratin tip. So it's like you're using a, a hot gun, a hot glue gun, and you're putting that strand of hair that already has glue attached to it onto a nat your natural piece of hair and you're fusing them together and with heat so that the glue is now infused with your natural hair and the extension. And they also last six months on average. They're very similar to micro links, except instead of it being attached to your hair with a micro bead, it's attached to your hair with glue or a keratin tip, which is still glue. And with that, in order to remove, you have to remove it with a razor. And you have to make sure that you're razoring off the glue and not the natural hair. So it's a very long, tedious process that can still damage your hair. So fusions and tape extensions are my least favorite. I do them the least. And for those, all those reasons that I just listed, that is why. Okay. Uh, before <clears throat> before we get to this um, this uh, this other feedback, I guess I just have one more question about just th that whole entire thing. Okay. Would you say that that the rubber bands, like actual rubber bands, not the scrunchy type, would it damage people's hair? Well, rubber bands can definitely damage your hair because the rubber attaches to your hair, and when you go to remove yeah. it, you usually have a few strands of hair or something like that. But mm -hmm. a good way to counter the rubber band from damaging your hair is to make sure your hair is moisturized. And what I like to do is I like to dip my um, dip my rubber bands in oil because the oil okay. makes it slick. So it's when I'm when I'm placing it on, it's not pulling at your hair. And I also okay. recommend that when you take when you remove a rubber band before you remove a rubber band, you put oil on it. That way, when you go to remove it, it kind of slides off the hair. You still may have to unravel it, but it'll slide off your hair and it won't pull your hair with it. Okay. Well, thank you for that insight. And now we got another compliment. Shauna has been my hairstylist since 2014 and she never disappoints. Her attention to detail, detail, styling, expertise, and customer service can't be beat. She is definitely one of the best book today. Okay. And that definitely comes from Brittany Griffin. Okay. Uh, don't know if you saw this one, but um, it also says, not to mention, she also slays my son's braids. He, he says all the time, Mama Kaylee is the one, is the only one I'm letting touch my hair. <laughs> I'm assuming that's how he sounds, but hopefully that was a good impression. <laughs> I love doing his hair. You know what? Every time I post him on my Instagram page or on Facebook, I get a lot of guys DMing me like, man, I want my braids like that. And he's a kid, mm -hmm. he's like the flyest kid I know. So he comes in 
and he knows exactly how he wants his hair. He's like, look, this is how I'm going for it. Maybe a picture of Travis Scott or somebody. And he's like, yeah, I want these braids like this. And then he gets it cut. And I mean, he has his outfit together. So grown men like see his pictures. And they're like, look, this is how I want to look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm gonna have to look him up then. We got a, uh, another question. Yeah, what is your too. location in Houston? So we will get to the location question soon, but go ahead and um, I guess you can address this one. My location? Yeah. So I'm located in Dallas. I'm not located in Houston, but, but you can travel to Dallas to see me. I actually just had a client come all the way from Houston to Dallas on Monday to purchase her wig and get her wig installed. And I mean, with the wig and the hair extensions, it's definitely worth it because they they last so long. And of course, when you come, I'm like, I'm telling you how to maintain it and I'm installing it as well. And I'm letting you know that if you want to install it yourself or if another hairstylist installs it, like this is a braid pattern. Um, you have a band, you have the clips. You can keep that as, I mean, my wigs usually last for at least a year. The hair extensions last even longer than that, but the actual construction of the wig lasts for one to two years. Okay. So it's definitely worth the drive. You drive one time, you come get your and, wig. And people can pay for you to travel as well, correct? And you can pay for me to travel as well, yes. Okay. So we got another one. I have thin curly hair. Oh, yeah, thin curly hair and middle aged. What is a good style for me? Thin curly hair middle aged well i was just talking about wigs wigs are always good they're good for everyone because with a wig it doesn't matter what your hair looks like underneath it can look however you want it to look on top so with thinning hair it's very tricky because you don't want to you don't necessarily want to install a sew-in or anything with um where the braids are too tight because it may thin your hair out even more or your hair is just so thin and fine that it doesn't really cover the extensions if you were to get a sew in and have hair left out. But my first thing would be, because I specialize in extensions and I love to do extensions, would be a wig. Secondly, with thinning hair or thinner hair and you're middle aged, you may not want to wear braids because you may not consider them professional, but the feed-in braids are really good style for all hair textures. They last a long time. If you work out or whatever, it's very easy to maintain. It's just a wake up and go type of style. You just have to put your satin scarf on at night. Um, you can cut your hair. When you wear your hair cut, when you cut it and wear it curly and have that texture, you um, it hides whatever thinning areas. So I would recommend a wig the feed-in braids because they're not as much tension on your hair as small braids or so in and cutting your hair and rocking it in its natural state and letting that texture really build and fill in your hair, giving you a fuller look. That's a great response. All right. So I guess, uh, I mean, is that all ethnicities? That's all ethnicities. Yes. Okay. Well, and, well let me verify you said this. You, you, for okay, go ahead. Caucasian, for Caucasian hair, their hair tends to be a little thinner. If they're on the thin side, then I wouldn't recommend the feed-in braids, but a haircut and having that textured look definitely works, and a wig works for everybody, whether you're dealing with thinning hair, gray hair, um, alopecia, or if you just have a scalp condition that requires you to have to wash your hair a lot you have to constantly wash your hair or put a certain product in your hair that prevents you from being able to wear it in a different style or or you have to put way too much heat on it after you put that product on then you should really be wearing something that covers up all of your hair and looks however you just wear a wig so it can look however you want it to look it could be curly mm -hmm. and textured if you want it it could be extremely full or or thinner and very natural looking it could be long or short and it could be whatever color you want it to be. So what is the best option if you feel like your hair is just not where you want it to be and there's no saving it? Because I do have clients that naturally have 
very fine and thin hair. And the issue with very fine and thin hair is if you wear extensions in any other form, a lot of times those extensions will either make your hair thinner because it's too much tension, it's put too much tension in other areas and you can't afford to lose any hair, or it's because your natural hair won't cover the extensions. So nobody wants to go out and have a track around here and <laughs> you have hair covering it, but you can still see the track. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that is a woman's nightmare. So you have a wig, all of your hair is covered. You don't have any extensions showing and you don't have to worry because stress brings your hair out too. So you definitely don't want to stress about how you're wearing your hair. You just want to find something that works for you and stick with that. Okay. So, I mean, you mentioned that you have, um, I mean, you sell hair, you do, you sell wigs and all that. Yeah. I guess, do you have a problem with pricing or? Do I have a problem with pricing? I mean, like, do you have a problem mentioning how much you charge or um, is there a website that they can go to to see how much you, you, you charge or, you know? Yes, there is a website for my services, which is... Yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay, so there's a website for my services, which is my style seat, which is styleseat.com slash prim up. And the cost for me to do your extensions for that service, all of that is listed. Um, okay. The hair extensions, the prices vary depending on the length and texture, but I do have that for sale in the salon. And no, I don't mind because I'm confident in my products. I don't mind saying the price because I know that the extensions I have are great quality. I know that it's going to last you a long time. So I'm very open with how much everything costs. But if anybody reaches out to me and they want extensions or they want a wig and they want to get pricing for it, I have no problem sending them a quote. Plus, if you really want a handmade wig for me, then you have to put down 50% anyway. You have to put a 50% down, 50% deposit down in order for me to make the wig. So you're going to know how much it costs before you arrive either way. But I definitely don't shy away from pricing because I like open communication. I like everything to be understood before you come because the last thing I would want is for someone to want a certain hairstyle or service that is not within their budget and they arrive and they're like wow this is what i booked for or this is what i thought i was getting and come to find out i can't even get that i would never yeah. want that to happen yeah so well. that's this is one of one you have to be upfront open and honest about whatever product you have the retail price or whatever and i i don't quote somebody one thing and this person the next because I think somebody can pay more to mm -hmm. afford it or mm -hmm. this person can't. My prices are the price. It, it, it is the price for everybody. Okay. Well, I mean, that. so that's good and um, I guess everybody, she's a one-stop shop. You can get your hair done. You can buy the hair from her. You don't have to go anywhere else. Just go ahead and hit up Prim Up. So with that, then, if there's no other questions or anything like that in the audience, and feel free to continue to ask or leave your feedback. But um, I guess, you know, where can people find you again? How can they get in contact with you? So you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram name is Prima, P-R-I-M-U-P. You can find me on Facebook. My personal page is Kaylee, K-A-Y, last name Lee. L E E, and my business Facebook page is Prim Hair Services DFW. But for my services to book with me for my salon address and direct contact information, you can visit my Style Seat, and the web address for that is stylesy.com/slash Prim Up, and that's P R I M U P. Stylesy.com/slash Prim Up. Right. Um, okay. So that's where they can get in contact with you. Uh, and and that's also the same. So they can purchase off the Instagram and the website too? Like as far as well, the, the products? They can reach out to me on Instagram and, and Facebook. 
But okay. as far as, and I, and I can give them quotes for the products, but my products are currently only sold in a salon, but I can ship. So if you do reach out to me, I will send you a quote and I can ship it directly to you. Okay. I don't have a website right now for my hair extension lines, for my hair extension line, because I'm working on my new business venture that's coming out. And so I'm revamping myself as far as the hair extensions are concerned. So okay. for that reason, my website is under construction and will be available in multiple areas very soon. Okay. Definitely nothing wrong with that. And I guess what are your hours of and operation? Right Say again. So on Monday, I work I work Monday through Saturday. Okay. Monday and Tuesday, I'm in the salon from 1:30 to 8:30, appointments only. From Tuesday to no, from Wednesday to Friday, I'm in the salon from 11:30 a.m. to 8:30 p.m., appointment only. And Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., appointments only. But you can book online. That's Southie. Okay. Linda Nickerson wants to tell you that she's watching and you've gotten uh Kamitra right. is telling you a great interview. We got a question Thank from you. Nicole here. What tips do you have for African women to grow their hair? Well, for it depends on the hair texture. So it said for African women, um, everybody has a different texture of hair, but overall the tips that I would have for hair growth is what you're putting inside of your body matters as much as you're putting as what you're putting on your body. So for sure, you want to keep your hair moisturized. I mean, that's, that's quite naturally what we all need to do in order for our hair to grow. And that is what African American and African women need most of moisture, 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 moisture. So make sure you're, your hair is moisturized, not necessarily your scalp. You do want your scalp to be moisturized, but more importantly, you want your hair, those ends to be moisturized so that they're not breaking or they don't break easily from hairstyling and just the, the things we do daily from brushing, et cetera. Um, making sure your scalp is not dry. So placing oil on your scalp, if you feel like it's dry, um, Taking biotin, vitamins help a lot. Hair, skin, and nail vitamins or just hair vitamins or just biotin alone really helps with your hair. You want to make sure that you're drinking enough water and you have a well-balanced diet because that matters so much. Like our hair and our skin is the last thing to get the nutrients that we put inside of our body. So if you want enough nutrients for your skin to glow and for your hair to grow, then you have to make sure that you have a well-balanced diet, and you're drinking enough water. Um, you can also put biotin on your hair. You can put biotin uh, shampoo and conditioner. So conditioners and shampoos that have biotin in it, they help as well. But like I said, what you're putting in your body matters more, not just as much, but more than what you're putting on your body. Okay. And would you say that you have any advice on aging hair as we wrap up? On aging, what I well, what I just mentioned was making sure what you put in your body is is, is right, like that well balanced diet, drinking your water, and all of that. On aging hair, that is the same. Aging hair, that's the same thing. So you want to make sure you're eating those green leafy vegetables, your fruit. Make sure you're drinking your water. Make sure your hair is moisturized. I know with aging hair, a lot of times we have those resistant grays and we try to color them. And the more you try to attack those grays with, with color and, and harsh shampoos to like purify the, the whiteness or the grayness, if you're wearing it in a silver color, all of that can be very drying to your hair. So you want to make sure you're putting enough moisture for your hair to be moisturized but not saturating your hair where you can't really do a style or when you go to put some heat on it it's burning just enough to make sure your hair feels soft and it's maintaining its moisture and drink that water 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 and your vitamins 
you know, I just want to thank you for, first of all, for, you know, doing the interview and for informing everybody on, uh, you know, hair care and the styles that you do. And, you know, I guess you already left your contact oh, I information. I can't believe I forgot this. I need to mention one last thing. Make sure you trim your split ends. Split ends grow. If you don't cut them, then they'll just grow and keep breaking off your hair. So that's another thing with maintaining your hair, whether it's African hair, aging hair, or anything. You have to trim those split ends. It's very important. Don't try to hold on to the little straggly ends of hair because you think it gives you a little length. Your hair will look so much better if you just cut it and all of your hair is healthy. I can't believe I forgot to say that, but other than trimming your ends, it's the water, the biotin, your vitamins, your, your healthy diet. And like I said, you can put biotin inside of your body because that's important for your hair. You can also put it on your hair. You can get shampoo and conditioner with biotin in it and make sure your hair is soft with the conditioner, softened by the conditioner and moisturized with, with moisture, with oil. Okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 no problem. And I, I mean, I guess if we'll have to do another segment on heat, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, pretty much sure that heat damages your hair from everything I've heard. Yes, so. and you have to use a heat protector if you're putting heat on your hair. I think, yeah, I feel like we need a whole another segment to talk about that. So, okay. yeah, if you if you use if you use heating tools, please make sure you're using a heat protector and if your hair is already styled and straight there is no need even if you're natural there's no need to go back through with that iron on the hottest setting possible at 450 or 475 when your hair is already pre-straightened spray that um spray that heat protectant on first and then you can go in with your heating tool but make sure you're not applying too much heat and still burning your hair off because that is a major issue for a lot of women. I would definitely say that I've, I've definitely heard that quite a bit. Yes. I'm glad well, you brought that up. Yeah, I thought I know a little bit of something. I, I, I see. I mean, I, I feel like you could be a hairstylist too, Nick. I, I don't <laughs> maybe, know about that. Maybe but your, next, your next career. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I did sell hair at a point, believe it or you not. Sold I, think hair? I, I think I told you about it back in the day. I was telling you in this how I found out you were selling it. Uh, I had no idea you were ever selling hair. Yeah, I had a distro. Was, I had a distro and everything. So, what was the name of your hair company? Um, it was just me selling hair, trying to make some money on the side. Oh my god! But I did do. You know me. I do my research. I get real extensive with stuff. So I learned a lot about the um, what's it called? The um, the and I don't even know what it's called anymore. The closures, the the, the the frontals, the frontals, the and all that kind of stuff. The closures, yeah. Uh -huh, closures, Brazilian, the deep wave, all that kind of stuff. I okay. learned about it all. You know a little bit, all right, all right. Uh huh. I, I learned about Peruvian and all that kind okay. of stuff. So, yeah, people's people's preferences and all that. So I I I know a little bit of something. Okay, I might have a little competition here, just a little bit. Yeah, Nothing very small. I had I had a good I had a good spot where I could get it from. So. I can only imagine cool. the ladies choosing you, you know, to buy hair from over me because they're like, oh, this this nice young man with this beautiful smile comes up to me. He's selling bundles, you know. So, you know, no. so you, you one up me with that, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, it, it, I think it's just an it's a um like an interest factor that that it kind of adds like, how in the world is this dude selling hair and how does he know about it? Let me just see what he has just because I think actually the top. <laughs> Hair salesperson in Houston, maybe even in Texas, is a, is a male. Really? I believe he's like a millionaire. Company? It's it's a person or a company. It's a. I mean, they have a company, but he he apparently apparently has grown the business. It was on the news actually. Um, you have to look it up. He, it, they're based out of Houston, but he's okay. like a millionaire just from selling hair. Well, I mean, the hair industry is booming. So there's a lot of beauty professionals that do really well with services and products just because we all want to look good. Looking good is a part of feeling good and looking good and feeling good is a part of actually being good, like being healthy mm -hmm. in the inside, like your attitude about things that, that makes and breaks everything. Right. So if mm -hmm. you look good and you feel good, 
then you'll do good. I think it's Deion Sanders. He had a saying. He was like, if you look good, then you feel good. And if you feel good, you play good. And if you play good, you get paid good. Yeah, I was just going to say you get paid good. <laughs> and I remember that. Well, I remember you said that. So, you know. Well, I'm always trying to play good. So <laughs> hopefully we start seeing some checks come through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, once again, I'm going to thank you for, for showing up and, you know, for showing out and playing good. So, you know, everybody that is has tuned in for this interview, uh, everything from, from Facebook to uh, the Facebook group, thank you for being a member of Hollywood Affiliate Marketing Services. Uh, also, you too, Krishana. Um, you know, make sure y'all contact her, follow her on her Instagram page. Go to her. I'm telling you, it's an experience that you won't regret. And as you can see off from all the positive feedback, and I can vouch for it too, even in the trailer that you saw, it's, yeah, I, you I've never seen anybody add, better. I wouldn't go to anybody else, so. You had to add your photo. I have to say this though, like. I was so proud. I've come such a long way. Like since I, I first did Nick's hair, I was actually working in my condo downtown when I did Nick's hair. So it was in my apartment and. I mean, I did. I still did good then, but I'm a much more seasoned stylist, and and of course, I have a newer, better camera on my iPhone now, and mm -hmm. so I didn't necessarily want Nick to like put that picture in the ad when he was promoting, you know, the podcast for tonight. But he did, and I appreciate you for being a client, a long time client. Whenever you do grow your hair out, because you go back and forth. But I appreciate you that up. you had you had to you know you had to represent. It was the one picture in there that looked totally different than all the other pictures. Okay? But y'all should still go check it out. You know, I had I had a fourth <laughs> man, but I was very proud of it. And then you have uh, y'all can go check request. out my my Facebook pictures and see. I was you at the wedding looking, too. looking I extra like, fly. I, would I had a what? You had a song request, so I was oh. video afterwards, and I'm like, "What song? You know, what song should I play?" And it was that song like, I got money all around me. I look yeah. like I'm the man. You know that song right yeah. there? That was your, yeah, that was a song in the background. So it was around that time, y'all, whenever that song came out. <laughs> like I said, if you know, if you, if you, if you, if you look good, you feel good. So you know, I planned on playing good. So I, you know, I had to, I had to do it and I was proud of, I was proud of it. So, I mean, Hey, we've had, <laughs> I, like I said, that was one of the, I, I've had my hair done a few times during that time, and I I yeah. never saved any of the videos. So therefore, it's a compliment to you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for having me tonight too. Oh, you're very welcome. Also, for everybody, um, Rashana, please leave your information in the bottom. Y'all look for her inside of the group. Uh, also, go follow her Instagram, follow her Facebook page, um, and check her out. And please leave your, your your contact information in the comments below when you'll be able to go and see it. I'll also put this in the description of the YouTube channel, which if you look at the bottom now, you'll see scrolling across the bottom. If you want to watch this again, please go subscribe to Hollywood Interviews on YouTube. Help us both feed ourselves. And um, that's pretty much it. And if you're watching and this is your first time seeing it and you're on YouTube right now, please hit that subscribe button. It's going to be on that side below, Krishana. So, uh, check it out. There you go. Do hit hit him with him one more time. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the subscribe button right there. There it is. Where's I'm gonna put it big as day. Right there. Right Leave it right there. there. Boom. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you, you again. Oh. Huh? Thank you everyone for tuning in. Yes. And I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna end the live now. But don't don't get off because we're gonna take our um you know we're gonna do our thing. So good night everybody else and y'all thank you for your love already. I mean you know as usual.